In this video, you're going to learn about the side-side angle ambiguous case when there's two triangles and how to draw those two triangles and solve both of those two triangles. We're going to go through two examples together, so maybe the second one you can practice on your own. Let's dive into this video. So the first example here, all we're given is this angle A, which is 32 degrees, side A, which we know is across from angle A with a side length of 7, and side B, which is 11. So sometimes students are like, Mario, how do I even set up this triangle? Well, let's just kind of draw it in sort of a general way here like this, okay? And here's our angle A over here. This is 32 degrees. It doesn't have to be perfect, the drawing. But what I tend to do is I tend to, when it's the side-side angle, I tend to always draw it in the same format until you get really comfortable and used to it. I usually put the angle over here on the, on the left. And then the side opposite, this is seven. And then I'm going to put angle B here, which means across from angle B is side B, which is 11, which means that this must be angle C and this is side C over here. Now, you might be saying, well, how do I even know if there is two triangles? Well, what you want to do is you drop an altitude like this. The altitude is like the height of the triangle. And we have a right triangle here. So what we can do is we can say that the sine of 32 degrees is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, so that's h over 11. If I multiply both sides by 11, that gives us our height. So I'm going to go to the calculator now. Make sure you're in degrees, okay? And that's 11 times the sine of 32. Okay, so I'm getting about 5.8. So I'm just rounding a little bit, 5.8. Now here's how you know when this side opposite the acute angle is in between the altitude or the height and the side adjacent, that means you have two triangles possible. Okay, if this side is shorter than 5.8, say it was like four, if you were to take this and rotate it, it would be too short. And so it wouldn't reach, you'd have no triangle possible. If it was exactly 5.8, it would just barely touch right here and you'd have a right triangle, one triangle. If this side is longer than this side, it would only be able to go out here to the right, like, and you just have one triangle. And, but in this case, when this side across is in between, that's the key, what that means is, because they didn't tell us what angle C is, it means that we can rotate this side here, okay, and like this, and you see how it intersects this side right here? That means we could draw the triangle like that. This is basically like a circle, okay, Kind of draw it like that. It's like a circle. And this is like a radius. So let's take a look at this triangle now. Let me draw it over here. So it kind of looks something like this. Here's your 32 degrees. Okay. And then this is a point of vertex C. This is 11. Okay, our side B. This is still angle B. This, this here now when we rotate it, see this is 7, right? So this is, this is going to be 7. Uh, that's our side A. And, okay, that's this little triangle here. Now, the original triangle, as I drew it, looks something like this. Okay, roughly, okay. Don't laugh at my drawing. Okay, this is angle A. This is angle C. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you're just trying to get the general feel here. This is 7. This is 11. Those are our two triangles. Okay, so now the next question that people ask is, what do I do first? What do I solve for first? Well, when you have the angle on the side opposite, angle and side opposite. So I think of the angle and the side opposite as a pair. If I only have one unknown, that means that I can use the law of science to solve for that unknown. In this case, you can see angle B is what we're going to be having to solve for. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do um, the sine of 32 degrees over the side opposite, which is 7, is equal to the sine of angle B over its side opposite, which is 11. Now if I multiply both sides by 11, and if I take the sine inverse of both sides, that's going to give me angle B. So I'm going to go to the calculator, which I have in my hand, okay, and let's see what this comes out to. 11 sine of 32 uh, divided by 7, okay, and take the sine inverse of that answer. Okay, I'm getting, uh, I'm going to round just to the tenths. You can do it to the hundredths if you want, but just for this video to keep it kind of simple, I'll do it to the tenths. This is 56.4 degrees. So that's this angle right here, 56.4 degrees. Now, let's look at this original drawing here. Remember when we rotated this side over here, like this? This is going to be 7 as well. Now, when you, the two sides are congruent, that's an isosceles triangle. What do you know about the base angles of an isosceles triangle? They're congruent. That means if this is 56.4, this is also 56.4, 
but this is our triangle right here. See right, right here, that means this angle is 180 minus 56.4. These are supplementary. So again, going to the calculator, uh, this is gonna be 123.6 degrees for angle B. So, I mean, long story short, I mean, you could find this angle and then just do 180 minus, okay? Uh, I knew that this 56.4 was this angle because this is acute, and 180 minus this was obtuse. So, again, you can, you can use that uh, as a guide, or if you want to kind of understand it better, this is kind of recognizing that this is an isosceles triangle, base angles are congruent. Okay, now, we can find angle C in both these triangles by knowing that all the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So I'm just going to take 180 minus 32 minus 123.6, which is 24.4 degrees. Over here, 180 minus 32 minus 56.4 is giving me 91.6 degrees. Okay, now all we have to do is solve for side C, which is across from angle C. So we're going to do the law of signs again. So, and now this is a little hint here. I like to go back to the original numbers if I can, just because it's going to be a little bit more accurate. So sine of 32 over 7, as opposed to using some of the rounded ones. Now over here, we, we've got to use this angle of sine of 24.4, sine of 24.4 over side C. So cross multiply and solve. So we get 7 times the sine of 24.4 equals C times sine of 32, but then I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 32 to get C by itself. So let's do that. So 7 sine of 24.4 divided by sine of 32. Okay, that's coming out to 5.5. I'm going to round a little bit here. So 5.5. Over here, same thing. We're going to do uh, the sine of 32 over its side opposite, which is 7, equals the sine of 91.6 over its side opposite, which is C. See, the ones across from each other are a pair. I'm going to cross multiply and divide by sine of 32. So these multiplied together equals these multiplied together, but then I have to divide by sine of 32 to get C by itself. So we've got 7 times the sine of 91.6 divided by the sine of 32, and that's giving us 13.2 approximately. And that's it. Now you solve both triangles. You've got you know, there's three different uh, pieces of information. We had to find angle B, so two angle Bs, two side Cs, and two angle Cs. Let me erase the whiteboard. Let's do another example. See if you can do this one on your own, and we'll go through it together. We've got angle C is 47 degrees. Side C, which is the side opposite angle C, that's 9, and side B is 12. So how would you solve those two triangles? Well, first let's just draw a picture. So it looks something like this, roughly. Okay, here's our angle, 47 degrees. I'm going to call that angle C. I always like to put it in this left-hand corner here. And then across from angle C is side C. That's 9. And then I'm going to make this angle B across from angle B is side B. That's 12. And again, just to verify that there actually are two triangles, you want to drop that altitude like so. So we're going to do the sine of 47 equals the opposite side, which is h, over the hypotenuse, which is 12. Multiply both sides by 12, and that gives us our height. So let's see, we've got uh, 12 sine of 47. Okay, I'm getting about 8.8, .8, roughly. But you see how 9 is in between 12 and 8.8? .8? That tells us that we can actually rotate this, okay, because over here, Angle A, they didn't tell us. They didn't tell us side A. So that means this is not rigid. So I can rotate this such that this intersects over here. Okay. So that means tells us that there's two triangles. Okay. So now let's go ahead and draw the two triangles. So we've got this triangle here, which I'll see if I can draw it something like this. So here's angle C, which is still 47 degrees. That doesn't change. Here's angle A. Here's side B, which is 12, here's angle B, uh, here's side C, which is 9. See, again, when I rotate, this, this is still going to be 9. And then if we look at our original triangle, which is this big triangle here, we have still C is 47, uh, still side B is 12, angle A we don't know, side C is uh, 9, and here's angle B. So what do we need to solve for? Well, we've got the angle on the side opposite, angle on the side opposite. We need to solve for angle B. So let's go ahead and set up our law of sines. So sine of 47 over its side opposite, which is 9, 
equals the sine of angle B over its side opposite, which is 12. I'm just going to multiply both sides by 12. And then to get B by itself, I have to take the sine inverse of this whole quantity. So let's go ahead and do that. 12 sine of 47. A lot of calculations. You have to just be a little bit careful. And then take the sine inverse. Okay, so that's coming out to, for me, it's uh, 77. I'm going to round to the tenths, 77 point. Uh, two degrees. So check my work there. So that's this angle right here, 77.2. 77.2. Now again, these angles are congruent because 9 and 9, it's an isosceles triangle. This angle next to it is 180 minus 77.2. That's this angle here. Uh, 102.8. Now we just have to find angle A. All the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So let's just do 180 minus 102.8. Uh, minus 47. So I'm getting 30.2 for angle A. Uh, over here we've got 180 minus 47 minus 77.2, 55.8. And now all we have to do is solve for side A in both these triangles. So working with this triangle, we've got sine of 47 over 9. is equal to sine of 30.2 over side A. Okay, we can cross multiply. Okay, so that's gonna give us uh, nine times the sine of 30.2 equals A times the sine of 47. Divide both sides by sine of 47. To get A by itself, so that comes out to nine times the sine of 30.2 divided by the sine of 47. Okay, that comes out to about 6.2. Okay, now for this triangle, same thing. Uh, let's do sine of 47 over its side opposite, which is 9, equals sine of this angle, 55.8, over its side opposite, which is A. Okay, cross multiply, so 9 times sine of 55.8 equals A times the sine of 47. Divide both sides by the sine of 47 to get A by itself. And let's see what that comes out to. I'm getting about 10.2. And that's it. You solve both triangles. So you've got three side, uh, two side A's, two angle B's, and two angle A's. So Great job if you're able to follow this video. If you want more practice or want to learn more about the law of sines and the law of cosines, I'll direct you to a video that I did right there talking about both those topics. I'll see you over there.